welcome <laughs> to episode 11 of PTBO Canada. I love Live. it when you do that, Mike. I, it's it's one of my favorite parts about Sunday, besides yeah. uh, the beer. And uh, so here we are at, uh, at Riley's once again, and new sponsor this week. Ben Van Veen. How does he do it? I don't, <laughs> he's yeah, Ben he, Van Veen. He's Ben, ben Van, Van Veen. Veen. Van yeah. Veen is, uh, you know, he's got the double V in his name. It's not easy to say. If you joined it together, it would be a W, and then he would be just Ben Van Veen. That's what I call him. Yeah. But he, he doesn't like Yeah, so welcome aboard, Ben. He's a local real estate agent in town. Yeah. Uh, real progressive with his marketing and product integration. And, Certainly, and he's got he's got some really cool things about what he does with, um, with selling houses, which I thought was kind of cool, and I wish I had known about uh, before. For. Not that my realtors weren't great. They were <laughs> <Yeah>. great. Sorry. <laughs> sorry if you're watching this. They're not. But sorry if you were. But uh, the whole thing where he like pays for uh, contractors to come and fix up your house, and then you only pay for that work when they sell the house. I've never heard anyone do that. It's smart because yeah. you, it's not like you're going you're gonna to lose out yeah. because what they put into the house, they'll make the money yeah. back on it. So it's so, a, so what if I want a $100,000 reno done? Do I just, and then I decide <laughs> I want to move? <laughs> like, yeah. could, uh, I don't know. Yeah. Anyway, I, and he also does air miles. I think he, he's saying that he gives you like a thousand, what is it? Thousand? And if you, and if you mention the podcast, PTBO oh, Canada yeah. Live, he will give you 2,000 2, air, 2, air, miles. air miles. So remember that, people. Mention this podcast, 2,000 air miles if you're selling your house. Well, dude, right? you know what the funny thing about air miles is? I was um, I was living in Calgary when I was working for 660 News, mm. and they, they asked me to go out to this like media game. It was the, the, the Bank of Montreal media game. They invited someone from everything, and you come down. So I got picked uh, by our media outlet to go down and check yeah. it out. And uh, I ended up winning this thing. I picked like the what player would score, and they gave me... Um, a thousand free air miles. Wow. So that was about six years ago. You know how many air miles I have now? Like uh, 1,200. So, so what do you do with that? What does that get you? I don't even know. Not I don't a even, lot, right? I don't even think it gets like me an alarm. Like a bag of potato chips? Like maybe an alarm bar. clock or yeah, something? Yeah, I don't know. Uh, my, but, my wife's always like, do you have your air mile card? Do you have your air mile card? I'm like, I don't know. But it doesn't matter anymore because they just sent out emails saying that by December 2016, you have to cash them out because they're just they're ditching the program. Really? Yeah. Wow. So well, however many, like if you if, if you need an alarm clock, this might be the time to cash it. <laughs> I don't need yeah. an alarm clock. I don't have to get up early ever. Yeah. I'm on my own clock. You live in an amazing yeah. clock. So I have to tell you, I I, I, I love your new pants, Mike. <laughs> you no, but you came in today, and I'm like, you're looking dapper. Like right. it's almost like you had a makeover. In <laughs> hey, you know, so if, so new pant, new jacket too. No, 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 old jacket. Yeah. So I, did Jen? Did your wife get you the pants? No. Okay. Uh, okay. So your wife goes out and buys your pants because you get migraines going to to, to shop. <laughs> this is true. This is a true. I story. didn't realize I gave you that material. <laughs> yeah, you gave it to me before. I, I opened a can of worms here. <laughs> <laughs> so what is it about going to the mall for Neil Morton that you can't handle and you develop intense migraines and end up in the washroom crying in a stall? <laughs> well, that might not be true, but it's always been that way since I was a kid. I cannot handle going to malls. I get headaches and migraines. I find it stressful. I find it, and it's going to a store and they hound you. Uh, the customer service people are like, "This looks good on you. That looks good on you. you should buy this, buy that." I don't know. So Christy finds it really weird. So literally, when we go to a mall, I have to find a fireplace, a chair, and a newspaper. Of yeah. course, I don't read newspapers. No, but yeah, I have to. I have to read. I cannot handle it, and I have to pretend I'm not in a mall. Right. And then I'm like in a library or something, That's and, and I get peace. Yeah, wow. because I don't get headaches, but I do when I'm in a mall. It's very weird. It, I don't. I don't. And it's not claustrophobia either. It's no. not like being around crowds. I, I like crowds. Yeah, you know, don't you love like like go, going into the stores into a clothing store and there's always like that one employee. I, I swear I find them every single time. That one employee you walk in and they're they're just all over you. Like, hi, yep. how are you? Yep. Oh, let's see. What do you think your size waist yep. is? And like you know, grabbing at your waist yep. and trying to jiggle your pants. Yep. It's like just leave me I, alone. And I'm mortified and I run. I run for. <laughs> I run back to the fireplace. So why don't you just order all your clothes online? Because I've got Christy. My wife loves to shop. <laughs> so she does all my shopping for me. And she'll bring home four or five different pairs of pants. And if they don't fit me, I'll be like, Can, and she'll bring them back for me and bring yeah. me more plaid. She always brings me two or three plaid shirts, which look identical to the other 50 plaid shirts <laughs> I have in my closet. But I'm like, well, it's new. I, yeah. I had like a travesty a couple months ago where um, two pairs of uh, like really my favorite jeans went down in the course of a week. And wow. uh, one of them zipper off. The other one uh, crotch rip. Wow. Yeah. On air? No, okay. no, 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 no. It was, it was at home. The crotch yeah. ripped out and a uh, little bit up the crack. But aside from that, um, so then I, I didn't have jeans. And I'm the worst for going out and spending money on myself. Yeah. And then, you know, you got the baby. and all, So yeah. I've just been, I've been running one pair of pants for yeah. like five months now. Yeah. And finally, Jen just, I, I woke up this morning and she's like, look. You got to look good on the podcast. Just go outside. <laughs> 
and go buy some pants. Right. You've been wearing the same pair of pants on every podcast, and you can go through the podcast and see <laughs> the pair of pants. Right. It's like we're filming the same podcast every week. Uh, every with what week. You're wearing. Yeah. You go, they're just filming it all in a well, block on Sunday. Well, whatever you did, I have to say you look fantastic. Well, thank you. You look great. I love them. And I love I'm going to go pants. to, Mo- it's Moore's, right? Yeah, I got them at Moore's. Moore's on great, Lansdowne. Great thing about these pants is that they're they're stretchy. They're stretch material. Right. So there'll be no crotch. Uh, yeah, rip. no crotch ripping. <laughs> yeah, because I need it to be. I need it to be stretchy in the crotch. Yeah. Anyway, it's I important. like them. You're styling, and kudos to you. Yeah. So I'm going to have to bring it for next podcast. Like, hopefully, Christy's <laughs> out shopping for me right now. But so uh, yeah. you know what? I want to. I want to revisit last week. Uh, last week's podcast. Tyler Calver, heck of a guy. Yeah. You know he what? Is. Um, one thing I forgot to show on the last podcast that I, I'm going to I'm going to show now for everyone who's watching on YouTube. I'll, I'll put up a picture right now. I was helping Tyler move, and I get into his basement. And he's like, oh, and his, his girlfriend comes downstairs, his girlfriend, Candace, and she's like, Tyler, are you going to take this thing or are you just going to get rid of it? And I swear, it's like a 20-foot-long global billboard <laughs> poster of himself that he stole from Global Calgary before he moved to Peterborough. He's like, well, it's got my face on it. They're never going to use it again. <laughs> and it's like him and like these two other guys, and he looks like he's 15 years old he on it. He still looks 15. I know. He's just a, he's just yeah. a, he's a young-looking guy. So did he steal anything from checks when he left? Uh, no, probably just that checks toque. Maybe a mug. The checks toque he wore? Yeah, yeah but they, they don't do billboards at checks, yeah. right? So there's nothing really worth yeah, stealing. Yeah, it's funny. I, I, watch the inter- I always watch the interviews after because I'm not really paying attention during because I'm trying to work the cameras. But uh, he's, you see a different side of him. Like, he's really yeah. he's really quirky. He's really quirky. He, he's like, squirrel, squirrel. Uh, <laughs> it's hard to keep him focused. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. But he, he's an interesting guy. And again, real community ambassador. He, he gave everything. But he's yeah. finding it a little hard, I guess, starting from scratch in Kitchener, right? Yeah. And, and they just keep him so busy. And, uh, you know, it's like... He's the, doing the weather, the sports, the news. In the bigger everything. markets, it's different. They don't want mm. you doing it. They're like, if yeah. you're doing it, we got to pay you appearance fees and yeah. this and that. And it's... Uh, it's it, people aren't as interactive. They don't want to try and talk to you yeah, in the bigger markets. Exactly. When I was in Calgary, it was like you, you never had to do this unless it was for like giant conglomerate charities, right? Right. right where like right. I like it here in Peterborough because you can like go out and help anyone. Yeah, you're involved with a million things. Hey, I have to give a shout out. Someone here is today in the in the audience. Uh, Ann Arnold's here. Yeah. And uh, and Ann's uh, speaking of community ambassador. Just she, a she, terrible community she's ambassador. She's terrible. Just with awful. <laughs> <laughs> Anne's gonna love us for this. No, she's she's excellent. She's all over the community doing stuff. But her big celebrity story, and I always bring it up to her, is do you know who she took water skiing in Perry Sound when she was a kid? In Perry Sound, yeah. Guess get what? Guess one of the, the hockey players, the best hockey players of all time. The Bobby best Orr. defense, Bobby Orr. Uh, okay, here's Ann Arnold took Bobby Orr water skiing. <laughs> do you know? Do you know Greg Orr? That's his brother. Oh, how would you like to be? The My brother? mother dated him. <laughs> <laughs> Are you kidding? My mom's totally watching this podcast yeah. right now. Your but, mom uh, could have married Bobby Orr's older brother? Yeah, well, maybe, but... but wow. We, we still make make fun of the name because my dad calls him Gregor. Yeah, Greg. Gregor. Yeah, what did he do? Gregor. Yeah, what did <laughs> yeah. Greg Orr do? Yeah. But um, no, Bobby Orr, Perry Sound, they used to have the sa- the sign when you go into Perry Sound that said, Perry Sound, home of Bobby Orr. Right. And my grandparents have had a cottage up there on McLaren Island for years and years and years. Yeah. So uh, I never got to meet any of the Orr's, but yeah. my mom grew up with like... Wow. Greg Orr and all those Isn't guys. Isn't that something? Small world after all again, eh? Yeah. So Ann took uh, Bobby water skiing. And, and did Bobby not fall, Ann, and hurt his knee? <laughs> now he ripped his shorts, though. I oh, he ripped his shorts. Wow. Hello. Worse than Mike ripping his jean pants. <laughs> wow. Bobby Orr's yeah. hockey stick. But yeah, I just wanted to give a shout out to Ann, who's here, and, and, her, and her lovely better half. But she's wonderful. Wonderful person in the community. So. Yeah. And uh, also coming up on the show is um, someone you've probably never heard of before. Uh, Linda Cash? No, no, no. I was talking about Ben Ruff. Oh, or, I'm, I'm, I'm saving, I'm saving the, ben, uh, the best for the last. I've heard of Ben. He's no, great. I'm kidding. Yeah. Uh, ben, uh, so w- w- we did have yeah. Dylan Ireland from Expressing Company. He was going to be coming in today, yeah. and uh, and Dylan is uh, in- incredibly ill. So we're, right. we wish you uh, the best of health and a speedy recovery, and yes. hope to have him on soon. Now is Ben here? Did he show up yet? Um, I don't know. I told okay. him. I told him three o'clock, and he said I can't do three o'clock. I said okay, three forty-five. He's okay. like I should be able to do it, and okay. he might, or he may or may not be bringing. Uh, uh, Melissa, Melissa Payne, Payne to, to, with the fiddle. Yeah, to play a little fiddle yeah. for us too. So we'll have to wait and see about that. Yeah, wonderful. But uh, but Benny's coming on. He's a pal of mine, and he's a, he's a really great guy, and uh, and an incredible musician. And yeah, it's just a super quirky dude. So I'm yeah. really excited. And he to gives have us time on. too. We hosted a Red Path event last year for a mental health initiative, and he gave us time with Nick Ferrio and came up another example. Of people all over Peterborough, right? Just he's a, he's a beauty. Another yeah. guy I met through John Hall. 
Oh, Johnny. Yeah, nice. So Johnny. he's played at Spanky's? Um, uh, you know what? He or, probably has. Yeah. Uh, I, I would reckon that he's played at Spanky's. He's played the, the backyard again. And he's at the trash. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. Who has who has, no, yeah. I haven't. My wife has. Oh, I did. <laughs> it, it closed right before I moved here. Yeah, I danced like you danced at the Harlow Trotter game. <laughs> oh, you don't want to touch the floor in the trash <laughs> that way, though. <laughs> it was my one and only time there. But, but yeah, Linda Cash is here. I'm yeah. really excited about that. So, you know, I used to uh, work with Linda. You did? Yeah, for a couple months. Well, no, well, I didn't know that. I was, Where um, was this? I was the news guy over at Magic 96.7 when we launched oh. it, and she does a morning show with Dan Duran. Okay, so were you on the morning show with her? Uh, yeah, well, I would read the news. You did? Right? So I was the news anchor, and occasionally I'd, I'd get uh, thrown into some things here and there, yeah, but yeah. For, uh, I didn't really last a long time, because uh, I, I went to checks shortly after we launched okay. the station. Yeah. But uh, yeah, so that's... So were you in studio with Linda? Uh, with? Well, uh, when she was in studio, yes. Okay. But she would uh, go through Skype as well. Oh, cool. So, wow. But uh, yeah, so that's where I first met Linda, but... Yep. Anyone else listening to the podcast, she probably hates us, but uh, anyone else who, who listens knows her best from um, from her role as the uh, the Philadelphia tr- uh, cream cheese lady. She was in those commercials? Uh, the, no, those are like the big uh, the big one yeah. for her. But yeah. um, for me, um, A, Seinfeld was huge uh, that, Seinfeld, she, that she yeah. was in Seinfeld. She's in Everyone Loves Raymond. Cinderella Man. Yeah, she's done some work with Martin Short. Yeah. Uh, she's, uh, she we did, looked her up on IMDb and it's like the list goes on it's and ridiculous. on and I had on. to pick some yeah. select things that I wanted to talk to To her cover about. today. But but, um, so I, are you were going to bring cream cheese, weren't you? No. Philly, no. Well, I was going to, but... But uh, that joke's been done a million times. I, she, I was going to do it and just put like a spoon out yeah. for her, and she'd probably be upset by yeah. that. But I saw her at City It's a few weeks ago. <laughs> yeah, that was, I saw her at City It's performing a few weeks ago, and you, that's the time you, you were on, guesting as well on that. Po- well, they, they brought me up for like uh, for one thing. The main guesting was yeah. last week, but yeah. I wanna, she's brilliant. Yeah, just she brilliant, is. Brilliant to she's, watch. She's one of the best I've seen. Well, that's why she teaches improv. Yeah, I took incredible. a class at Pop on King once, yeah. and... and uh, uh, her and uh, and and the, the late Paul Sullivan, unbelievable, just yeah. fabulous teachers and great mentors, and they're positive people too about everything. So yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I think it's uh, it's about time that we bring uh, Linda on here. Yeah. yeah, let's do it. Yeah, this was oh. fun. All right, cheers. Cheers. Where's your, where's your beer? Oh yeah, right yeah. here. Okay. I got some left. Cheers. Yeah. <laughs> All right. We'll return with Linda Cash shortly after this brief message. PTBO Canada Live is brought to you by Ben Van Veen Realty. Ben Van Veen is a swell guy. He works with Century 21. He's been doing a great job in the region. The reason why is because he's got some pretty unique services. Number one, he will send contractors to your home to get it market ready, and then you don't pay for those contractors until he sells your home. That's a pretty sweet deal. Number two is that if you list with him, he will give you 1,000 air miles up front. And then if you mention the podcast, He will give you 2,000 air miles. We like the way you think, Ben. And then on top of all of this, one of the greatest things that he does is he will actually create a website for your listings. You're not cluttered in with all those other homes online. No, your house, your listing gets its very own website, and I'm sure that's going to help it sell a little bit better. So if you want to check out Ben's services, you can go to benvanveen.realtor. That is his website. And I guess the question, the last question everyone has is, how does he do it? Well, his name is Ben Van Veen. That's how he does it. He's got a great name. Let's go back to the podcast. <laughs> this is fun for me. This is fun for me. This is first time I've done this. This is your first podcast? My first podcast. No, yes. well, it's, I guess technically it's a video podcast. Yeah. Yeah. So here we are. We're back with uh, with the wonderful... Linda Cash. Thanks, thanks for that intro. And uh, well, uh, it's not done yet. Uh, okay, it's going. like a five-minute intro. Have you, really? I'm just going to read your entire Wikipedia page oh here. Oh, there's so many lies in there. No yeah. way. Who, who did you pay to write this thing? Because it is unbelievable. Uh, like, if, I if didn't pe- pay anyone. That's Wikipedia. So I don't know. If 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 you're judged alone by your Wikipedia page or just what you've done in your resume, you are uh, you're doing pretty well. And I, I think I need some uh, I need some help. So, but I'm going to start off just in case um, you're not overly familiar with Linda, I'm going to say a few things and then all of a sudden you're going to be con- completely dialed into anyone that's watching. So a few of the things that you've done that I've selected off of Wikipedia, I'm going to start with your film. First of all, um, I did not know that you were a part of the Ernest franchise. Yes, and indeed. I grew up loving Jim Varney. I thought he was brilliant. And hey, Bert. Uh, what was he like? He was an amazing guy. I did... Three, I did Ernest Rides Again, which is the slowest action film you will ever see in your life. <laughs> Shoestring budget. I did uh, Ernest Goes to School, and I did Ernest Goes to Africa, and I went to Africa, and we shot it at Sun City 
in Johannesburg. Really? Yes. So that, that movie, you actually shot that in Africa. Yeah. I guess you kind of have to. Yeah. It was, it was fun. The eh? other two were Vancouver, and uh, yeah, we went to Africa. It was crazy. Well, it was a, it was a shame losing Jim. I remember I, I felt like a big part of my childhood was lost when uh, when Jim went. So, but He was an amazing guy. He had a total alter ego, interesting, real character, but in front of kids, he was a totally different personality. Yep. When the cameras were off, the man had... <laughs> jewelry for days and he really smoked his head off and he <laughs> liked a good drink and he was a pretty rough and tumble kind of guy. He no was, way. Yeah, he had Rush Limbaugh under his arm. He quoted him all the time. <laughs> Loved his uh, right wing politics. He we had few really good debates. Yeah, Jim I would Barney imagine I. maybe a couple good arguments yeah. there if he's uh, if he's into Rush so much. Yeah, he was great. He was a great guy. I That's love them all. They're all from Nashville, and I used to do the Post stuff in Nashville. I went to a big o- opening down there. Yeah. It was like being a part of a Three Stooges kind of group. I mean, it couldn't have been bigger, the the performances, and it, it was just so fun. It, amazing. So uh, that was the first thing I wanted to bring up. Also, um, Best in Show, obviously, it must be one that you get asked about all the time because it's seriously, like, probably up there in my least top 20, like, favorite comedic films. It it's is a lot of, within the industry, a lot of people love Best in Show and Waiting for Guffman. I am completely honored to be a part of that group. It was all improvised. Um, um, and uh, there were 55 plus hours of film for them, or or uh, HD or whatever, for them to for Christopher Guest to cut from there. Right. Uh, it was a blast. And it was an uh, absolute blast. Of course, um, a lot of SCTV alum in there. And um, is that how you kind of got in there with your... Yeah, I, I've worked with Eugene Levy many, many times. I played his wife a number of times. So he introduced me to Christopher Guest, and I lived in L.A. at the time. Yeah. Uh, there was an hour slotted for my interview. And seven minutes later, I left and went, that was the worst interview I've ever had. <laughs> I didn't get the job. I was horrified. I was He just made me so nervous. And I got the job, and everybody, including, you know, makeup people and hair people said, he's like that with everyone. He makes everyone uncomfortable because he's an incredibly uncomfortable guy. Yeah. When he's on camera, he's he's in his element. He's not that comfortable outside of that. Right. So, uh, so he's kind of the social awkward type. but. Yeah. Uh, but intensely smart and genius. Yeah. Genius. Probably the smartest man within the industry that I have ever worked with. He, when he would tell a story, he would become the character. He told me a story about this guy that he met in Alabama, who was a fisherman, uh, you know, catching catfish. Uh, a black dude who was probably you know eighty five years old. And as he was telling the story, the facial structure changed, the voice changed, and it was like Christopher Guest became this old black guy toothless on a dock in Alabama. I was like, I- I've never seen anything like it. He wow. just absolutely transformed. That's so cool. Yeah, and it's, it's, it's part of the craft and what you guys do. And when I watch you in some of your roles, um, you're like, yeah, sometimes you're hard to even recognize at times. It's, That's a real compliment. It's really, really cool. Appreciate it's like, that. And I'm like, I- I'm looking through the list here at some of the things. I'm like, I don't even recall her being in there. And I had to go into Google and start looking and finding it. I'm like, that is mm. Linda, but I'm looking at it still. I'm like, that's not, but it is uh, the love guru, which is. Um, um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, don't blink. <laughs> but I got to work with Justin uh, Timberlake, right? Who was like outside of the studios that I shot, there was a huge billboard, and there's this incredibly sexy guy on this billboard. And then 10 minutes later, I'm working with him, and it's like, was this cute little boy like he just didn't seem like the guy that was on that billboard he just has the it factor i can't figure it out but he was a really nice guy and he's funny i've, I've seen a lot he's of funny. saturday night live stuff that he's done and uh, he's a he's a pretty easy uh, yeah it factor he's brave. exactly yeah he he definitely he's he gets out of his own way i mean that's the main thing i teach when i teach improv is a lot of the time we've got that self-critic that's telling us don't say that that's stupid that's dumb don't go there If you can get rid of that self-critic, regardless of what you're doing, then, you know, just let the muse do its work and you will find the character. And I try to get out of my own way. It's hard to get rid of that self-critic. I I was telling you earlier that um, the city has asked me to come and do improv with them last week. Yes, I heard you did great. And, um, well, apparently, according to to the reviews that came out, and, you know, I I, I felt really good about it because I I had fun, but I was sitting there up there on the stage just so nervous, like rubbing my hands together, sweating. 
But once you get out there, it's like, well, you're here. You might as well just, you know, let yourself hang out and see what Absolutely. happens. Absolutely. And you might as well risk falling flat on your face or not because you're amongst people who really, they just, they're just rooting for you, right? So the more you risk failure, the more you, it, and, and some of it does lay there. It's not good. A lot of it isn't good yeah. necessarily. Even when the city it's do it, I always say people that watch whose line is it anyway, like there is a cutting room floor. Right. So their worst material really doesn't make it to air. They allow themselves the crap so that the good stuff can come through. That's right. You, you have to be able to fail to succeed, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Now, a couple more things. Um, something that you're working on now is, uh, or, or sorry, last year was something called Fall. And I don't think it, it's been released yet, has it? Fall just came out in uh, um, TIFF, I think, the Toronto Film Festival. I actually haven't seen it yet. Okay. Uh, but it was with Michael Murphy, who has been in a bunch of Woody Allen movies. He's right. actually one of Woody Allen's best friends. And uh, he was an amazing guy to work with, and I loved it. I loved it. And I, I worked up in Sault Ste. Marie. I work a lot in Sault Ste. Marie and Sudbury because everything what? north of Perry Sound gets us tax incentives. So oh. there's like this real Hollywood North industry going on up there. I had no idea. Yeah. It's very poor, poor, busy poor, poor in Perry Sudbury. Sound. I know. We were just, how does Perry Sound come up twice in one podcast? Oh, really? We were just talking about Ann Arnold. Uh, Ann Arnold, I think, like, what did she do? Ripping off Bobby Orr's bathing suit or something? That was Perry Sound. Oh, that's hilarious. I think that's how that story went. Um, Now I'm going to quickly go into your TV because this is absolutely ridiculous. Your TV resume is unbelievable. Um, First of all, Seinfeld, you played Gwen uh, in the the Lip Reader episode. I'm sure this one you get asked about all the time. Um, That was with Marley Matlin. That was my first gig in, uh, in L.A. Really? Yeah. So I had lived there for a year. You know, we kept uh, flying back to Toronto to make some money. And at the time, the dollar was like right in the toilet. Yeah. So made as much money as we could in in Toronto, then would fly back. And my cat had an awesome apartment that (laughs) I very rarely was in. And I was actually body surfing, which was a a sport that uh, my partner at the time and I adored. And uh, so we were body surfing in Malibu. Yeah. And in those days, they didn't have cell phones. So I just went to a phone booth in my bathing suit and just check the uh, messages and the message was you've got to be in Studio City in 45 minutes you have a, a Seinfeld audition Whoa. so I got in the car I basically dressed in the car there was sand in my hair and <laughs> elsewhere so by the time I got to the audition it was like I wasn't nervous at all I was so happy that I made it over the valley into Studio City and I think that's why I got the part because I was just like I made it. I'm here. Now, when you're auditioning, are you auditioning for, like, Larry David? And yes. What is that like? That guy... Here's what Larry David looks like. Yeah. Just a miserable does, guy. He d- does not smile. <laughs> and if he's in your eye line, which he was when I was actually shooting the restaurant scene, it was like, this man hates me. Right. But actually, he doesn't at all. He just smiles from deep within himself. He just not, he's not effusive at all. Um, and actually, I didn't get a lot of laughs in the live taping. Jerry Seinfeld does 45 minutes of stand-up at the beginning for 400 people in the studio audience. Wow. He had them in the palm of his hand. They loved him so much. Yeah. George would do his line. Huge laughs because it's George. Everybody loves him. It's season four. It's a huge hit. I would do my line, and it was... <laughs> I was like, oh, my God, they're not reacting. Every time that it was my line, it was crickets. And I thought, I'm going to be in the worst episode. Uh, This is never going to make it to air. And I had people come up to me during the shooting saying, you're in a classic. Do you know that? And I was like, what are you talking about? They hate me. Then I saw the cut version with the sweetened, you know, audience laughter, Mm -hmm. laugh track. You can't tell. No, you can't tell. And it is a classic. It's one of the greatest. It's been recut many, many times. I'm really lucky. But in the moment, no, Mike, it wasn't going well. So it didn't feel like it was. If it's still in like syndication, do you still get like residuals from it? Yeah, about fourteen dollars. Fourteen bucks. Time. It's awesome. That's like that's yeah, like a six good. pack of the the expensive beer. Not too bad. And it goes like every time you get every time it's rerun, you get a little bit less. Yeah. So it started like like this is pretty good. And things like Best in Show, <laughs> they know you want to be in those movies, right? Yeah. So it's not like you make the big bucks. Over time with residuals, it just gets less and less and less. So I've gotten, you know, 13 cents for stuff that I've done. Well, that's, I mean, it's better than not hey. getting 13 cents, right? Perhaps it's like a part <laughs> of a piece of gum. Right. Sure. It's huge. Um, Sabrina the Teenage Witch, Sybil, Third Rock from the Sun, and the name of this episode that you're in is called, do you remember the name of the episode? I can't remember. 15 Minutes of Dick. Ah. <laughs> I was, I was really confused by yeah. what you were in, and yeah. then I saw it's Third not, Rock of the Sun. That, yeah. Okay. Perfect. Um, 
Everyone Loves Raymond. Um, yeah. And then some uh, Canadian stuff. Puppets Who Kill. Degrassi Next Generation is another one you're in. Um, Robson Arms, recurring role for nine episodes. Yes. Very cool. Yeah, she's and then, a bit of a stoner, that character. Oh, uh, maybe a little bit. Yeah, a little bit. A <laughs> little bit of stoner, cougar. That was in my cougar period. You're, you're not a cougar? Uh, no, I'm not getting cougar stuff as much anymore. A tigress, perhaps? Maybe. Yeah. The aging tigress, maybe. Yeah. I like tigress. <laughs> <laughs> um, Ron James show. Great. How, how you, you know Ron James pretty well? I know him very well. He's a, just an awesome guy. He was in an Ernest movie, movie with me. He okay. was in Ernest Rides Again. He's hilarious. He's and, hilarious. And I love his Facebook rantings. The, yeah, me too. They go on forever, and I read them all the way through. And he means it. And you, he really does. He means it, and you can. I read it in his voice. Yeah. I know that voice, and uh, it's yeah. it's incredible. He's so super, super smart, and he's one of those guys like with Rick Mercer. You know, my husband Paul, who was a huge guy within town and, yeah. and in Canada, very, very funny, um, passed away almost three years ago, and both Ron James and Rick Mercer hired me almost right away. Which was really hard for me to go back to work, but I was so scared that I couldn't perform again. Yeah. And they kind of both pushed me to do it. So I am ever grateful to Ron James and to Rick Mercer for hiring me going, get back on the horse, you can do it. What so what, what was in your head that was saying that you might not be able to perform again? You know, you go through something like that and you just go, I don't know what I want to do with my life. Like, I, you just, it's such a U-turn. It's such a, everything just like changes that you think... I don't even know if I'm a comedian anymore. I don't know if I'm funny. I don't know if people can look at me and not think about this horrendous right. thing, right? Which is a very interesting journey because it is something that I carry with me, but it is also not totally who I am, right? And it was it was such a sudden thing. Like I, yeah. I it just it just happened completely out of nowhere, and it yeah. must have, like I can't even imagine how it would, it would turn my life upside down with something like that happening for me. Um, I think as an artist, you know, these things, it's too trite to say that you can, you know, uh, put it in your work. But the truth is, crap that happens in your life, uh, I think, is a, a much bigger teacher than the great stuff. Yeah. Because the great stuff, you sort of go, bonus, that's awesome. <laughs> you know, you can, you can live with that or it makes you have a swelled head or whatever. But the really tough things change you they absolutely change you so you know you have a crossroads scenario so you can go one way or the other way yeah and i don't know fate's been really good to me and also i have kids so i had to get back on the horse and i had to survive it and you, i you feel have three like girls right with I have Paul? three girls yeah i've uh, actually one with my first husband it's mm. sort of a brady bunch thing so, right <laughs> uh, i have a daughter from my first husband he has a daughter from his wife okay and then he and i made tilly so we've got three kids his mine and ours right we traveled with the exes. We did. I had all our Christmases. We had all wow. our holidays together. Yeah, it was a really unique blended family scenario, which continues now. So we still, I still see his uh, ex, who is a dear friend, and uh, yeah, so it works. Did, did you have the the nanny in the middle? The nanny, when we lived on a farm, lived above the uh, barn. Yeah. Oh yeah. Above the barn. Above the barn. That, yes. that sounds like a, a good farm podcast. For 10 years. Yeah. Above the barn with Linda and the nanny. <laughs> Honestly, there's heating there. Come above the barn. <laughs> That's where all the heat goes, right to the roof. Exactly. So, but um, that and, and, and I want to get to uh, to the studio here in town, and right. uh, you're still running it. Uh, you know Sylvia Arsenal uh, very well. Yeah. So Sylvia um, is on the checks daily with me every Thursday. I know. Uh, as our nearest practitioner, and she is hilarious. She is hilarious. And she she was talking to me. She said that she wants to do um, like the equivalent of Sex with Sue, but sex with Sylvia and have it as like a television program. I think she should. Or a podcast. I yeah. told her I'd film it for her and uh, we'll put together a package for her because she is hilarious. She's hilarious and she doesn't hold back and it's very important to be upfront about stuff. Yeah. And uh, no, I think... I think she'd do great, and uh, and she she loves the the seniors side of things, which I find particularly interesting because yes. I'll be there one day. Of course, I, I need tips, and you're hoping to be active up there up when you're up there. I or mean, down, oh, over there. Up in terms of age, right? Up right. there, in not terms up there. Of, no, or or down. Anyways, or um, anyways. <laughs> so, but she 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 works out um, over over at your place. So, um, how are things going? Are you still there quite a bit? I'm still there. I'm I'm kind of um, passing the scepter on to some of my students who are teaching with me and for me. 
Um, you know, I'm a bit of a control freak. I like I like it to go as well as possible because the whole mandate of the place was don't go to Toronto for, you know, for lessons. Stay here and we'll give you professional training here. Right. So, uh, but it's a lot. It's a lot for me without Paul because it was really a, a labor of love for he and I. It's v- very hard for me to do it on my own. So Sylvia has her own workout group, which is great. She yeah. does that Sundays. And then Wednesdays, a guy named Mike Davidson, who's a great guy, he teaches at Fleming, so he teaches uh, drop-in for anybody that's interested in trying improv. I do the camps, and I do uh, some Sundays with kids and teens. Have you ever thought about doing something like, um, like similar to Second City for Peterborough, having it be like a, a Second City where you have shows like all, all the time and whatnot? Well, at the venue, we're doing um, every third Thursday of the month, we do a, a dinner theater thing, right? which is really fun. So yeah. all of it is improv, but last month we had the Illustrated Men who are a sketch comedy troupe. Awesome. Yeah. So they actually did uh, written material, and then we improvised in the second half. Okay. So, I, you know, we're just batting around different ideas. But, yes, I, I do think it's really important, and I'm constantly asking my friends from Toronto to come up. It's my way of seeing them, but it's also my way of working out as well. Because I, I think the thing about improv is you can't stop. Right. I mean, I've worked with all those SCTV people, and even they get a little afraid of it if they stop. They, you got to keep exercising that muscle. Otherwise, you can get scared of it, and I never want to get scared of it. You know who's a guy who's still incredibly sharp is Martin Short. Very sharp. Like, uh, I have, and you've worked with Martin, I think, on a Cat in the Hat cartoon or something? Yeah, I did the Cat in the Hat cartoon, and Paul did a pilot uh, with him, and I've done a lot of sort of Second City reunion kind of stuff on stage with him. He is a really, really a nice guy, and he's very, very funny. Tons of energy difficult to be in a scene with him when he's sort of like Robin Williams where you kind of have to wind him up and let him go and see where you fit in there uh, but he's great uh, he is like the Fearless. Canadian Robin Williams he's he he's all over the place and yeah. uh, and still I, I saw him he, he's I guess he's been he's been uh, peddling a book that he's written yeah, he's or got whatnot. A book. Yeah, and he's I been know. all over these podcasts lately so it's been kind of fun to watch him yeah but um, you were telling uh, me just a second ago that um, you've got something coming up for uh, uh, an event called Paul's Left Ball Paul's Left Ball okay, how did that start first of all Paul's Left Ball uh, well Paul's Left Ball is a uh, is a fundraiser that I do every year since his passing uh, and the money goes to hospice because when Paul died hospice Peterborough was phenomenal with you with me with my family they just walked us through this really really tough time mm-hmm. and uh, specifically a guy named David Kennedy and uh, they were amazing they were just amazing so it's my way of saying thank you it's also my way of commemorating Polly and uh, how important he was to the city of Peterborough and to the world of comedy because uh, the city it's in those guys. I mean, Paul co-produced a show every month. He got he really got improv started in Peterborough. So I really, really want to keep that going. And um, so this month we're doing Paul's Left Ball 3 and we're doing Ball in the Family, which is kind of a spoof on All in the Family, where I play Edith Bunker. Yeah. And then, oh, man. Oh, it's going to be fun. It's really fun. Have you been working on your Edith? Oh, jeez. Oh, <laughs> you have to see the whole thing, but yes, I love to. There you go. Yeah. Uh, well, we'd like to get local celebrities to be part of it, so uh, I'll give you a call, because we're looking for the right episode to spoof. Oh. And then in the second half, we're just going to do some improv. And Paul had a uh, pod, not a podcast, but a blog. Yeah. Um, and I'm actually trying to find, like, I don't know his passwords, but I'm trying to find access to his blog because there's a couple of blogs that he wrote that are just like, fall down funny. They're so funny. And there's one about his vasectomy that I really would like to read <laughs> out loud that night. It's, he had a vasectomy with the friendly vasectomy. No, the gentle vasectomy. Oh, the gentle one. Yes. My favorite. It's a great blog. Very, very funny. So I don't want people to miss it because I'd like them to remember that he was a phenomenal writer as well. But but how does his left ball work into all of this? Um, I don't know. I yeah. just decided I needed something catchy. And um, Paul, when he was ticked off, would say, oh, balls quite oh, yeah. often. He would refer to his balls quite a bit. Yeah. And um, They're important. <laughs> They are, indeed. Imagine having something dangling off of your body that is, like, the number one pain zone for, for your body. There's yes. nothing else. That you, and you have to protect them with your lives. They yes. become a very important part of it. They do. Yeah. And apparently they grow longer and longer the older you get. Yeah. Is yeah. that true? I don't know. Uh, <laughs> not mine. I keep getting reductions. Yeah. 
Well, Paul's, Paul's Left Ball is just something that you can remember, and it hopefully will go on year after year. And I also give away um, a, a set of golden balls um, <laughs> for an improviser who I think has improved most in the year. So Sylvia won it last oh, year. Oh, cool. Yeah, and um, I know who I'm going to give it to this year, so I like to give an award away, and they're lovely little... Are they cast in like cast molds? Um, they're 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 sort of spray painted. It's the cheesy version. Uh, the the bigger budget I get, I guess I'll make some bronze balls. But you'll have to get yet. someone to cast them. Yes, I yeah. think that would be really a local artist. Maybe. You could say like, I'll give you these balls in veins. <laughs> Um, something like that, right? That's really good. Yeah. That's right. But um, uh, I, I, just a quick story here, because you're mentioning left balls. Um, I had a friend in Calgary who, they used to have a friend they'd call BLT. And they'd be like, yeah, oh, this is BLT, BLT. And it's like, why are you calling that? His, his nickname was Big Left Testicle. And at parties, he would, he would show people, like, apparently, like, the size of a grapefruit. It was a problem. And he ended I was up just going to say, I hope he got that looked at. He got it fixed. But for the me, in the meantime, it was a party. Uh, it was a party piece. trick. Yeah, it was a party piece. Wow. <laughs> yeah, BLT. Okay. Well, there was there was a little asymmetrical stuff going on, but it wasn't it wasn't that. Right. Okay. As I recall. <laughs> well, there are always one slow. Yes. Yeah. Yes, and us too. Yeah. Oh, of sure. course. I mean, uh, symmetry. Who needs it, it? You know, we obsess over symmetry. We and, do. in our lives, and um, we're not even symmetrical. No. It's like we have to Nor get over it. Nor should we be. Exactly. Right. We shouldn't be. So, what, what do you do? What, what do you do from day to day now? Because you're still working. I mean, we first met at Magic 96.7. We did. And uh, you're still co-hosting with Dan. I'm co-hosting in the morning. And, and so I get up at 5.15 and get my entertainment stuff together. And I work until 9.30. Yeah. And uh, I love it. It's been really, really good for me to do because it wakes me up positive. I am in a good mood because I need to be. Um, I'm lucky enough to be able to do uh, much of it on Skype, which is great. So yeah, that's awesome. So I can get my kid to school. I can make lunch, breakfast, so I can be home. And then I do the last bit uh, at the studio. They are, they've been amazing to me. And uh, I also teach at Pace, which is, uh, yes. which is a really cool school where the PCVS building used to be. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I'm teaching uh, young moms. Okay. Yeah. So how do, how do these young moms get involved with Pace? They, like, what is Pace exactly? Pace, for, for I'm, I'm not sure what it stands for, but it's for, do you know what Pace stands for, Ann? It's it's basically education it's like, for it's people. It's like Peterborough who are, Adult Community Education, maybe. I think so. So it's for people that aren't uh, that don't do well in high school in the mainstream, and That's I like should me. have been one of them. Me too. Oh, totally. I was the worst. I was more than the worst. I was a terrible student. I don't know how I did it. I think I did it because of these. Oh, did you? Yeah, I think these got me through. Anyway, <laughs> I was smart. I dumbed it down a little bit, more than a little bit, and I, I like the weed. But anyway, <laughs> uh, pace is uh, for, for kids who want to get their education but don't want to be in the mainstream. And these are actually young moms. Okay, great. And yeah. and so you're teaching improv to like these. Like and I get to hold babies. You get to hold. And uh, I have my baby somewhere I, around there. Your baby's right there. Oh, there yeah. he is. He's so hanging quite, out. quite fond of babies. <laughs> and um, it's, it's a really great course because it is improv and it's new for these girls. And... Uh, they're doing great. They're very, very brave. They don't necessarily know what they're getting into with improv. And again, you know, I'm asking people to be spontaneous, be in the moment, be silly, be silly in front of each other. It's not an easy task. And I had a breakthrough, I feel like, last week because I think they're starting to really enjoy themselves Yeah. and not look at themselves as they're doing it, which is very key. There's so much self-confidence that you have to have that you have to build into doing it. Like, uh, I remember the first time I went on for weather. I was just terrified. A because I had no idea what I was going to say. Like on camera. On when camera. You got to yeah, the first. I bet. It was terrifying. Yeah. And uh, and now it's not. But then I got that same rush of adrenaline at the city. It's right. And uh, you know, there's always that little voice in your head that's like, you know what? Uh, you know, these people are going to think you're an idiot. Yes. You're gonna... There's that critic, right? We all have it. You have it. And uh, what kind of benefits do you see? Like you must have seen so many transformations in your life using improv. What does improv do for people to to help enrich their lives? I think it just do, it does just that. I mean, whether you're a real estate agent, whether you're a preschooler, or whether you're you know retired and looking for something to do, it it gets you out of your own way because ultimately we all have great imaginations. We all have something to offer. Mike is different than Linda. You and I are gonna come up with different goods, but they're all interesting if we get out of our own way 
and different from stand up it's not about me and the audience it's about you and I creating something together so I need listening skills which are really difficult to yeah. have especially these days because we don't listen very well anymore <laughs> I need to be in the moment, which they say is the best place to be anyway, right? Yeah. And I need to not direct it my way. I need to be generous enough to take your idea, but I also have to take the ball and I have to lead. So there's leadership skills, there's following skills, there's collaboration, there's listening skills, and you find your own funny. And your own funny is, as soon as you ask yourself to be funny, none of us are funny. Like, I don't want to be asked to be funny. But it is funny anyway because the audience just can't believe what you come up with if you get out of your own way. And I, I truly believe everyone can improvise. It's I've worked with kids with special needs. I've worked with all sorts of people. It always works. Do you ever hit that moment on stage where you're like, yes, I just, I just nailed something. Where the hell did that come from in my head? Yes, I, I, I do have those moments. And that's usually followed by a moment that falls like piss on a plate <laughs> and doesn't work well at all. Because you can't, you can't sort of pat yourself on the back too quickly because you've got to stay in the moment. And that's the beauty is that I have failed so many times on stage. I've been so embarrassed that I don't really get embarrassed anymore, which yeah. is wonderful. It's totally freeing. And also, I'm older. So there's that added bonus of, I would love you to love me, but if you don't, Meh. I don't really care. <laughs> I don't care. It's okay. And you know what? It, it kind of seems like improv, there, there's no place for an ego in improv. Like, you cannot have an inflated ego because you no. will get crushed. You do. You really do. And so it also doesn't matter how well known you are. I found that some of the celebrities that I've worked with who have a big name, there's more at stake because they really don't want to look like idiots because they're whoever, whoever they are. And I feel for them because I think I've never, I, I, I'm glad that I'm in a position in the business that I don't feel like I can't fail. Right. So I'm constantly, um, I'm constantly challenging myself. And the way that I'm challenging myself right now is doing more dramatic stuff like The Fall, yeah. which isn't funny, but is character driven and scares the crap out of me. I'm scared. I'm scared that I will put my tongue in my cheek and I'll make it funny. Because I'm so used to going there. Yeah. So it's really interesting to stay in the scene and not be funny. Now, the uh, the one you did with the uh, with the Titanic, you played Molly... Molly Brown. Mo Molly Brown. Was that a serious role as well? That was a serious role, yeah. I mean, that was a BBC production where um, most of the... Uh, most of the British, uh, like the Astors and the, the British characters on the Titanic were um, sort of magnified in terms of their importance so Molly Brown who I thought was a rather important character on the Titanic was a tinier part than I would have imagined so I had like one scene one yeah. or two scenes in it I spent much of my time on a boat and I don't have sea legs and Mike I was so sick I remember this because I was at oh. Magic at the time when you got picked up and I thought this is yes, so cool right. That I'm like working with someone who. Well, actually, I'm not working with her because she's gone. But uh, she's. <laughs> it off was doing, in Budapest, yeah, and that was Budapest. the first time we skyped it. It was so cool. It was so cool, and we skyped over, and I was on the other side there. That was a lot of fun. That's right. So you're, I guess, you're sticking around this area for a while. You're not I moving am. back to LA anytime soon. No, I actually gave up my green card. I had one, oh. and I kept crossing the border so many times, thinking. I don't think I should have this green card. I got, I just got panicky. Yeah. So I surrendered my green card and I went to the consulate in Toronto and they said, are you sure lady, you want to give this up? It's like, yeah, I want to give it up. So I'm, I'm here and my daughter's in high school and the more I can be home, the better. So that's what I'm focused on is getting my last of the three kids through high school and watching them fly. That's cool. Mm -hmm. Now I, I know you mentioned earlier, People and people in their stinking phones. They don't listen anymore. But some people like to ask questions over Twitter for Linda Cash. So I want to. Okay, I want to well, see. That's so weird. I've never done that before. So we're we're doing Twitter questions, and uh, we've got some people who have asked. Uh, I know there were at least two questions. Okay. So let's see. Where are we? First one weird. comes weird. from Leslie Curtin. Okay. She says, where does your energy come from? And she also wants to let you know that you are loved by so many. Ah, that's so nice. Where does your energy? Is it just? Leslie. Is it I, natural? Is it coffee? Is it cocaine? Uh, um, it is. Um, it is my mom's. My mom had had energy to spare. You, your mom also sang opera, right? Yeah, my mom was an opera singer, and my mom toured all over the world and stuff. Wow! And um, I am recognizing that whatever this stamina is that I have, I, I think I actually lucked out genetically. Yeah. Because I've got 
her energy. I, I do love coffee, but I try to limit it. Yeah. And uh, although cocaine was fabulous in the 80s. Um, it's a little dead now. It's a, it's a little, yeah, it's a little passe. It's a little can't, can't do that stuff anymore. <laughs> but no, it's. I think it's just... Uh, Something that I got from her. Yeah, just a just a good work ethic and uh, and a happy demeanor. I think I do have a happy demeanor. I, that's I'm, a choice. At least but every I think time. That's my mom too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, Christy Candish uh, Candlish asks, uh, "What acting job was the most fun to do?" Huh. It's a tough. It's a, that's got to be a really tough question. It is tough. I would say that any time I can improvise is usually the best fun that I can have. And sometimes that's with script. Sometimes you get to play around within the script. Um, I also had a really good time. I did Cinderella Man, so I got to work with right. Paul Giamatti and uh, and Renee Zellweger and Russell Crowe, and like playing the big leagues was was really fun. Feeling like okay, Linda, like even though you're freaky out because you don't feel like you belong at this table, I I got to be, sit at that table, and that was really really fun. Giamatti is he? He's just the nicest, the nicest guy, the sweetest. Yeah. You remember his role, Pig Vomit, in uh, Private Parts, the Howard Stern yes, movie? Yes, that's where I got my first taste of Paul Giamatti, right. and I loved him. Uh, he's done so much, and I think he's completely surprised by his own success. He just works really hard, yeah, and uh, he's just totally humble and lovely. He's a great guy. So, do you have any students or any people you know here that you think are are, are going to go on to something? Yes. Yeah. I think I just uh, adjudicated at Kiwanis in Toronto, and I would say that out of 50 kids that I saw, three are absolutely stars. Really? But I think that often that's the ratio. I think there is this thing, this element, where everything comes into place, because I think that kind of success has a lot of facets to it, and uh, it's very rare. I mean, when I, I worked with Mike Myers when he was like 19. Yeah. And you just knew it. You just, you, just, you absolutely Was just that at Second it. City? Yeah. And I worked with people that were funnier than him, uh, or at least as funny, but there were certain parts of personality that just weren't in place. I mean, you needed thick skin. You need to have that unique thing that you're willing to celebrate. But there's something else that is kind of mysterious. And I would say there's a handful of people in Peterborough who I hope continue. Okay. I would never discourage anyone from doing the business, but I I'm fairly realistic about, you know, the roller coaster ride that it is. I like the roller coaster ride, I always have. Yeah. It's feast or famine. I don't mind that. And I do a lot of different things. And keep your day job while you're trying. Yeah, and like your day job. You know, don't hate your day job because that's uh, that's not a fun life. No, and you're you're so lucky to have a, a day job that you like with with Magic and the crew over at I Pine do. Ridge. I am really lucky. I still, I still feel guilty for leaving so early, but it was it was it was. That's te- okay. You made a huge impression though, and you had to go where the you know it, it was I, guy. I really wanted to try it. I wanted yeah. to try television. I've been in radio for for a few years. I'm, I just I wanted to try it, and I felt and now really you're trying bad. improv. So there you go. Well, I mean, I think you are. You're dipping into areas that are not totally comfortable and yeah. it's great it's yeah. the only way to grow the, the improv felt really good uh, I want to try it again so hopefully they'll have me back and Ray Ray came on here and he told us the story about how the city it's got their name yeah they just got a phone call and it was from Paul he said Ray yeah I booked you guys in we can't make it I booked you in at Bethany yeah we called you the city it's <laughs> yeah, that's your name and, and it's stuck I know <laughs> it's stuck I know and uh, they sell out every month the, the, they're, they're doing, doing a great really job they're really well it is so much fun to watch them and they're growing every time I play with them it's like these guys really have it stand up is not catching on in Peterborough but improv is and uh, mm. I, I don't know what's, what's wrong with stand up I don't know why it's not like there are people doing it yeah but it's not uh, there, I don't know I love great stand up as much as I love great uh, improv I'm not sure because stand up is a lot easier to get together because it's a mic and you and the audience but it's few and far between there you know the stand ups that are wildly good uh, that's pretty rare I think do, do you have any running right now that you love um, what's the guy's name? Edwards. Uh, Jim Edwards. No, no, he comes here. What's the What's the stand up stand up that comes to show place? What's his name? Oh my god, I'm so embarrassed. He's so freaking funny. Oh, oh, I can't remember. I'm terrible with names. I'm trying to think. Yeah, me too. I was. I, I know Brent Butt was here recently. Oh, I love him. Brent He's great. is very funny. Yes. Like I'm a I'm a big Louis C.K. fan. Love as well. my Louis C.K. as Louis. well. Loved my uh, Kinnison. Sam Kinison. Oh, Sam Kinison is amazing. And, he was amazing. And Norm Macdonald, another great yes, Canadian. Fantastic. Yeah, he, uh, his, he, I don't know if you saw his podcast on YouTube. No, I didn't see it. It was called Norm Macdonald Live. He did like maybe 12 episodes and he's just gone on hiatus and no one knows what the hell's going on with Norm's podcast anymore. It's been like a year, but just 
hilarious. He's such he a, he's such a jerk. I love Hard him. to stay genuine. I've done stand up. I did a stand up class in Toronto just just to try something uncomfortable. My first show that I did was our sort of final exam at a bar, and I killed it. I killed it. Wow. I really did. And Paul said, Linda, I think you're stand up, and I was like, I think I am too. I. I think I can do this. This is a whole new career. I did exactly the same material a month later, word for word. Yeah. And I bombed. Wow. I bombed, bombed, bombed. Not good. Did you sense like a, any kind of f- different feeling in, in your delivery? Well, you or? know, you think you're going to really slay with that first laugh. And when you don't, you go, oh. And then, of course, everything gets a little jiggly and a little bit uh, insecure. So your delivery, obviously, is going to change. Like, maybe like, I should say it this way instead yes. of that because they're not feeling the way that I tried push, it. And then you push, too hard. And it was like, nope. No, I'm not a stand-up. Actually, I'm stand-up not. Stand-up scares this. me. That's it's one thing I want to try. I can't do it uh, at least in Peterborough or let anyone know who I am when I'm doing it. I got a great teacher. Good. When you're ready, I got a great teacher. It was really, really fun. Yeah. Okay. Because yeah, it, it scares me, but I'd, I'd like to. I'd like to try it. It's it's a bucket list thing for me. Well, I do a lot of hosting for fundraisers and stuff, so I needed some minutes. I needed some material. Yeah. It was, it was great fun. That's a good point. Okay. Yeah. Well, um, it's been uh, 40 minutes we did with hey, Linda Cash. Not bad. Yeah, you, uh, I, mean, I could fill another uh, <laughs> 10 days with you, but we should do a 10 day marathon um, in, in, in the top of uh, above the barn with, uh, with should Mike we? and Linda. Okay, yeah. all right. No, we shouldn't do that. No. But anyway, uh, thank you so much for joining me, Linda. Thanks, Mike. You are an absolute I'm so pleasure. I'm thrilled to be here. And uh, do you want to do any shameless plugging? Um, if you want to learn how to improvise, you know, go to pop up and actually go to the uh, Peterborough Academy of Performing Arts on Facebook. Yeah. There is a drop in for adults. There's camps for kids. What else? Um, Paul's Left Ball. Paul's Left Ball. Sorry. It's on uh, April 16th. Yep. Awesome. And um, the Young. venue every third Thursday of the month. Come down and see some fantastic comedy. All right. Hi, everyone, Linda Cash, episode 11 of the PTBO Canada Live podcast. Thank you so much for joining Thanks, us. Darling. We've got Ben Ruff coming up after this. Let Thank me you. hold your baby. <laughs> PTBO Canada Live is brought to you by Riley's. Riley's is the host of this podcast. You can meet us here every single Sunday between 3 and 4 p.m. Come hang out, have a pint, have some of their nachos. Their nachos are some of the best in town. And just hang out and watch the podcast. And uh, you know what? If you get sick and tired of watching the podcast, you can always head next door to Petrina's. They own that too. And that is a humongous billiard. They have big screens all over the place. You can watch the game. If there is football playing on a Sunday, then you're going to be getting half price wings and half price nachos. And then you know what? Uh, I also have to remind you, upstairs is a little place called The Junction. They also hold functions at The Junction. It's a great dance hall. Lots of great stuff happening in this place. It's an entertainment complex. But don't forget, we shoot the podcast here 3 and 4 every single Sunday afternoon. Come by and hang out. Let's watch the podcast. Welcome back to PTBO Canada Live. And joining me now is a uh, a guy I met a little while ago, a couple years back. His name is... uh, Ben uh, Ben Ruff or Benny Ruff, uh, whatever you want to, whatever he wants to be called. Um, he's from the band Ben Ruff, but now things are getting better. He's also, um, I think, um, How You Ben was your first album. Was <laughs> I'm not okay. I'm just being a dick. But um, at the same, oh no, I'm just being quiet. You, you are quiet now. You've uh, you've come into the podcast today, and you're going to play a little tune. You asked me what what did I want to hear, and I said something about being in a forest, something about a sailor. And one thing, you played at the Backyard again last year. You, you like to, to actually create the songs in the moment sometimes, don't you? Sometimes I do, Mike. Sometimes, sometimes I do. What's that like? It's like talking to you right now. Uh, the, the words aren't pre-written. Yeah. It's just, they just come to me. And then I deliver them. And somehow we believe. Yes. The first time we met, uh, my friend Mike Dalton was playing in town. He played on the first podcast. You came in and played um, a quick set over at The Spill. And you came in, you played, and then you quickly left. You, you scurried out. And we both we all looked at each other like, who is that guy? Because you played some very, very eclectic music and uh, some very interesting stuff. I was, I was very much taken, and uh, I'm really glad that you came to be on the podcast today, sir. Well, it's, it's a pleasure to be here, Mike. And I'm a big fan. No, Thank no. you. I'm a bigger Thank fan. You. And one thing I'm going to do is a shameless plug. Where is it here? This is... Oh, okay. Here we go. There it is. For everyone looking. Ben Ruff, New Names, and old Fl- For Old Flames. You can actually find that online as well, right? Where you can we find it? You can it on... find it on the internet. Where can I find, find it on the internet, Ben um, Ruff? If you, if you type in any series of these words... 
they they will usually lead you. But I'd start with Google or go to uh, you type in Ben Ruff, and uh, there will be a website or and go to, buy it and spend money on it. And, and also you you can have it for free right now because I'm doing a pay what you can because oh. I'm re-releasing it on vinyl before I put out my next album. Are you really? Yeah, I think so. When's the next album coming? I think I'm putting out an EP in early June and then another EP maybe in middle of September. And then I have a side project called Beach Life. Yes. And we're going to put out a tape in a seven inch maybe just into summer. So whenever summer begins, like June 21st, something like that. Like a cassette tape? Cassette and seven inch. <laughs> That's awesome. With like, you know, free digital download or whatever. Yeah. And then um, something. there's something else, but... Um, it's Sunday afternoon, actually almost evening, Mike, and, uh, you know, I'm not, I'm not flowing with energy. You know what? You're always flowing with energy. Which I actually think is a radio station, Peterborough, Ontario, Canada. Uh, 99.7 Energy FM. Yes. Flowing with energy, I'm Ben Ruff. This and is, we're competing with, with this station right now. No, we're not. No, we're not, because this is online. They're, they're well, on the, the way. Everybody's on the internet these days, Mike. All right, stop ruining okay, my Okay, sorry. I'm sorry. All right, um, Ben, uh, you're going to play us a little ditty. What, what are we going to hear? Okay, I'm going to do an old song of mine, one of the oldest songs that I still perform, which I wrote about Peterborough, but I specifically wrote it for a radio show uh, Trent Radio, and they oh. were looking for a jingle. And I heard the call, and it was um, a show. I can't remember the name of it, and I would say it's from the early to mid 2000s. And the show was hosted by Jill Staveley and Laurel Pollock, and they were fantastic on air. It was sort of an hour community and music and announcement show. It was great. And they they put a call out for a song, and I like and I. I like to be asked to write a song for a reason. I like a task. You know? Okay. So just an idea to write a song, and then we, then we can start. So I'm thinking Trent Radio. So I started this song. I wrote it, and then I was about to send it off, and I decided it's maybe not to give to a nonprofit radio station. And uh, not... Anyways, um, it's an old song. But it's a bit fun, and it's kind of a Sunday in Peterborough. All right. I love Sundays in Peterborough, especially and when we, they're lazy we added a this beers. verse here, too, Mike, because you asked for some specific things. <laughs> and can, I just want to say for the record that I, this is my first podcast, and this is pretty ridiculous. What do you mean? Oh, I just mean, uh, and ridiculous is also my word for 2015. But that's <laughs> another conversation for another podcast. All right. Well, here's the ridiculous Ben Ruff. And uh, he's going to play a little tune. Thank you very much for joining us on the podcast, sir. There's a girl I know And she saved my soul From a life of living long and reeling in a place where the sinners go, the sinners go. So down on Hunter, that's where we meet. Passing cars, dodging the street, and the house is on fire. Not so good, the fire escape. Still made of wood All I know is when I got it right and I found me a better life And you hold it up And show them around and Just so they know Just so they know This girl I know she Saved my soul From a life of Living low And a real end In a place where Sinners go, the sinners go. Am I the ocean or the forest? Do I sell the seas of grain? Pour 
a call We drank Irish whiskey Just west of the Atana Bay That's a girl I know To save my soul From a life of living low And reeling In a place where the sinners go Sinners go Girl, I know Girl, I know Girl, I know And to save my soul Ben Ruff, everybody, put your hands together. That wraps up episode 11 of the PTO Canada podcast. Thank you for joining me. All right, let's go have a beer. Thank Mike, you. Mike, I made a mistake. No, you didn't. You did not make a mistake. David Kosky made a mistake for not showing up today. That's I, it. My parents made a mistake. I won't That's agree. That's a terrible joke for I, a Sunday <laughs> evening. I won't disagree with that. All right, cheers. You're right. You've never heard of some other things that came out of his mouth. Yeah. No, nobody ever went to her way. Great character. Uh, yeah, but on? Uh, actually, Neil comes on first. Oh, okay. Do I step out? Sure. Okay. <laughs> but I'm only on. For, yeah. 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 I'm only on for like five minutes. Okay. A, Is this you guys hear all that? Yeah, I'm just trying to get the camera angle set. So, if you could just hold Tommy for the next hour. <laughs> Jen, feel free to go and do whatever you want. Yeah, Jen, you go shopping. He's okay with me. Okay. So Mike, I think that's good. I got this recording. Okay. Is this on? Yeah, it's on. Okay. It's set. It just needs to record. Okay, so you're sitting here, sweetie. Then I'll come in after. Yeah. Mm -hmm.